So, you think the Guachichili made these before the Spanish were here? Well... You realize the implications. I mean, you know what that looks like. A dinosaur. An Apatosaurus. Yes. A seamless reconstruction of what we expect them to have looked like based on 20th century science. Lacking our knowledge of paleontology and the fossil record, how could the Guachichil have had such an accurate depiction of dinosaurs, John, unless they- Unless they lived among them. Now, that might be a bit of a stretch, Emil. Even if these weren't such obvious fakes. What? I'm sorry, but what my very rude graduate assistant meant to say is that we are skeptical that these will hold up to scrutiny. I don't know what to say. I found them, John, in the dirt with my own hands. It's possible they were planted, or maybe they're not pre-Columbian. More recent artisan crafts of imagination, maybe. And where is your evidence for such claims, John? Where's the evidence to prove that these are what you say they are? The dinosaurs died 60 million years before humans existed. I mean, it's preposterous and an outlandish assumption not fit for a scientist. What's preposterous is your arrogance. If you already have all the answers, then why are you even here? I'm wasting my time, apparently. My father understands the importance of bold ideas. Vision and cunning are what led to the next great discoveries. That cynical schoolboy skepticism. Well, I appreciate the prognosis, but- No, she's right, Alton. You're being dismissive. We are scientists. That means we're objective. We consider the evidence. We test our theories and we make the right call. Not based on assumptions, not based on our systems of belief, but based on the facts. John, the burden of proof is on them, not us. I'm not talking about proving anything, Alton. I am talking about the proper way for a scientist to do things. John, I'm obviously quite familiar with the scientific method. I don't think you are, Alton. So let's review. We ask scientific questions in a very specific way, the scientific method. Purpose, research, hypothesis, experimentation, and analysis. Those are the steps that you're going to get from us, Emil. Not arrogant bravado. If that's okay with you, Alton. Fine. Okay, so, purpose. So we want to know the date that these artifacts were actually created, right? For an archaeologist, date is as important a key as location for determining context and redefining what we know about history. Next is research. What background information can we provide for our question? The more context we can give ourselves, the easier finding a solution will be going forward. In our case, from what period of Mexican history have other artifacts of this style been discovered? Next, hypothesis. So what do we think the answer is? now? Obviously, we may differ in opinion on this, but let's just say for the sake of argument that these artifacts really are over 500 years old. Next, experimentation. Time to test that hypothesis with a specific set of scientific procedures. In archaeology, to experiment is to excavate, so Emil, since you've already done that, we will need all of your notes and any pertinent details you may have from each site. And lastly, analysis. Record what happened, call together as much information as you can from that experiment. If you're a chemist, you write down what happened when you mixed up the potions, but us, we're pursuing relationships. Relationships between things, how they rest in the dirt, and how they correspond to one another, and what that may say about our artifacts. We ask scientific questions in a very specific way, the scientific method. What are Newton's three laws of motion? Do you know? Warren Fort Lawrence. You bet you are, huh? Tom! See you, Tony! Brooke!